शुभ दीपावली हैप्पी दिवाली और दीपावली टू एवरी वन ऑफ यू आई वॉन्ट टू टेक आउट अ फ्यू मिनट्स ऑन दिस वेरी स्पेशल डे एंड शेयर विद यू सम इन साइट्स एर आर कमिंग इन माई माइंड फ्रॉम माई चाइल्डहुड और वाई द फेस्टिवल ऑफ लाइट्स इज नॉट जस्ट अबाउट सेलिब्रेटिंग लाइट आउटसाइड बट इट्स रियली अ जर्नी फ्रॉम डार्कनेस टू लाइट वैन आई वॉज अ यंग किड growing up under the teachings and protection and mantle of my guru baba yodhyana we would chant all the time asato ma satgamaya tamaso ma jyotirgamaya mrityor ma amritam gamaya what it meant was that i am willing to journey from asat that which is only an appearance only a mirage to sat which is the ultimate truth in past present and future i am willing to journey from the darkness the ignorance of my mind to light illumination where i become enkindled with gnanam or knowledge wisdom and i am willing to journey to discover who am i beyond this mortal body oh great supreme being i am ready to be told and to recognize and realize within me my own immortal essence amrita this mantra that i chanted really comes alive with a diwali theme and i wanted to share that with you do you want to know how first i'll have to tell you a story The story is of a beautiful magnificent gorgeous handsome prince of the kingdom of Ayodhya he was going to be crowned king the next day by his father Dashratha but a uh, situation transpired as it does in families whether you are a um, you know from a simple family or a royal family stuff happens people have temperamental issues drama all kinds of politics can happen and the stepmother conspired against the prince rama and and he found that though his dad didn't want that to happen but uh, there he was he was banished from the kingdom he had to spend 14 years wandering in the forest and um, he found that uh, oh i'm not going to be the king after all and when he was on the way to the forest his beloved wife sita said i'm going to go with you which just shows that sometimes even though we are moving from uh, a comfortable place in life towards a dark confused space in life people who truly love us if we are lucky to have someone like that a soulmate they will join us and lo and behold even his brother lakshmana said no way i'm not going to let you go there i'm going to be there with you even though you're elder to me and you've been protecting and guiding me all your life i feel like i need to be there and please take me and so the three of them left the beautiful kingdom of ayodhya and ayodhya at that time it is said was steeped in darkness because people loved their crown prince he was so beautiful so noble so royal and something special about him that people talked to each other in whispers and said i'm telling you he's not just a human being he is vishnu he is an avatar of vishnu he is special but how special he is we will find out soon because anybody can look and feel special in a kingdom sitting on a royal palace uh, on a throne but he continued to be special even through all his misadventures in the dark forest and his story is enshrined in the hindu epic known as ramayana that might have been translated in just about every language um in the world so when he was in the forest he tried to make the best of his experience and they built a hut with forest material there branches and things and one day when rama was away looking for fruit to bring home his wife sita saw a golden deer and she wanted it she wanted to make that deer her own deer because she had never seen a deer that was shining like pure gold this was a complete enigma to her and like any other person she's like oh can i have that and she wanted that deer but unfortunately 
it was not really a golden deer and things transpired that in an effort to get that deer somehow um, the deer revealed its reality it was only an appearance what was behind the deer was a very evil-minded king known as Ravana he was a king from the kingdom of Lanka and uh, he wanted Sita to be his it's like you know okay you want the deer and I want you you're so gorgeous so beautiful you look like a Devi a goddess I want you of course she said no and so then he abducted her against her wishes and um, carried her away to Lanka and uh, because she was very firm with her boundaries and kept saying no he he had her captured in an area surrounded by more evil looking characters some women watching over her and while she cried and you know wished that she had you know not uh, run after the golden deer well and when rama finds out he misses his soulmate he he sheds tears for her because even if you are a divine being in your human avatar you can be vulnerable and he and his brother set out to find sita and their adventures through the forest uh, are accounted for beautifully in ramayana and beautiful poetry where all kinds of species help them and help point the way to how ravana has led her and they could put the pieces of the puzzle together and they figured out that Sita, their beloved Sita, you know, um, his wife has been abducted. And so he wages a war, wages a beautiful dharmic war to get his wife back. And in the process, Ravana realizes that this is not just some good looking uh, prince, some youngster, you know, from Ayodhya, his, that kingdom. This is an amazing divine being because Ravana had, uh, you know, some kind of special powers that he could not be easily killed, but slayed he was. He was slayed. And as he was, because he was slayed by divine being, uh, at the end he realizes what he had done and he becomes, um, um, you know, contrite as well as he becomes aware that he has a higher purpose in life. So he actually does not die a mean death. He dies a beautiful death at the hands of Rama. He almost becomes liberated from his own evilness as a result. And then uh, Rama and his brother Lakshmana escort the beautiful Sita back home. And their journey back home to Ayodhya and the day they arrive in Ayodhya, that day is marked as Diwali or Deepavali because thousands and millions of Deepas or lamps were lit by the people of Ayodhya to welcome them. Now. This is the outer story and it's beautiful and we celebrate that. The return of Rama, Sita and their brother Lakshmana back to Ayodhya, back home. It is definitely the victory of goodness uh, represented by Rama or evilness represented by Ravana. It is the victory of light, uh, of goodness again over darkness. But really the way I understand it in my non-dual lineage from Ayodhya, yes, I am also from Ayodhya, my family is from Ayodhya, my ancestors are from Ayodhya, and that is why this festival is very special to me. This is really all happening inside us. Ramayana is happening constantly. This is not the story of one prince from Ayodhya. Ayodhya literally means a place where there is no conflict, no sorrow, no darkness. And in the Rig Veda, it is mentioned that our whole being, our body, mind should be, is Ayodhya. We should also be leading these lives. But how can we become, how can we return home to Ayodhya? How can we return home to our higher self, our peaceful self, our healthy self, our happy self? And that is what I try to teach. Uh, and have been teaching through my team at Vedika Global and through all our classes with Ayurveda Yoga and Vedanta. How does that happen? It happens when we recognize a very critical dimension that Rama is your own soul and Sita is your own mind. And typically your mind is your friend. You're typically your mind, just like Sita accompanied Ram to the forest, your mind wants to accompany the soul and be with it, supporting it in its life mission and life direction. However, 
sometimes when the mind thanks to the senses views a golden deer it can get distracted and then it can become captivated or captured or under the bondage of a greedy desiring corrupted ego represented by Ravana. That is what happened. The beautiful Sita, the beautiful pure mind, the beautiful consciousness of Sita got captured by Ravana. But Rama, the soul, would not take it for too long. Rama became restless until he could capture his mind back to the purity and the worthiness and the throne that she deserved. And ultimately, that is what happened the soul Rama, accompanied by the mind Sita, supported by the conscience Lakshmana, return home to Ayodhya, the kingdom, the body, the mind, the life, where all is well, peaceful, happy, healthy. I hope that for you too, Diwali is not just a festival to, you know, uh, light a few candles or lamps, buy um, new clothes and wear them, give gifts to each other, which is also great. And I do the same too. But it is also a time to contemplate, also a time to uh, gain some wisdom, also a time to meditate and contemplate upon how far is my mind from my soul's desire. If you listen deep inside, your soul is whispering what it really wants. Your soul wants to be healthy. Your soul wants to be prosperous. Your soul wants to have good family life. Your soul wants harmonious relationships. Your soul wants oneness with God. Please bring your mind and soul together at this Diwali. It's totally possible. That is why the Upanish Upanishads, the ancient text of um, the Vedas say, Manayava Manushyanam Karanam Bandha Moksha Yoho. When the mind and soul are united with knowledge and wisdom, then that same mind becomes the cause for freedom, sovereignty, which is known as Moksha. And when the same mind is ignorant, it is self-ignorant, it doesn't understand and it runs after the so-called golden deers, then it becomes Bandha or it becomes imprisoned by a delusion-filled, illusion-filled, um, sorry state of the ego. May this Diwali be the day where your mind gets released from the ego and it goes back and sits in beautiful unity with the soul. May the Rama and Sita within you be united. May the soul and mind within you be in, united. May the ego like Ravana die an enlightened death saying, oh, I have no business meddling between the mind and the soul. May you have great effort, great benefit in this bringing together of your mind and soul. May you to return home to Ayodhya, the dimension within you that is conflict-free, sorrow-free, disease-free, and totally filled with light. Happy Diwali.